What is up, everyone? Welcome to Moon Live on this June 3rd, Thursday. I'm so excited to be here guest hosting our special guest today. Our special guest today is Lane Banning. He, yes, <laughs> taking that applause. <laughs> he is the man, me. the founder, the creator of Moon Recording. And wow, I know, right? I'm so happy to be here and switching it up on you a little bit. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so. I feel I, I I think back on our friendship, our relationship over the years. I do you remember the first time that we met? So Elaine and I go back all the way to NYU days. We both went to New York U University back in the day. Yes. Um, do you remember when we met exactly? Uh, it had to be on the eighth floor of the Steinhardt Building at uh, was it thirty five. East Fourth Street. Yes, yes. <laughs> just, just east of uh, Washington Square East. Yep. Yeah, I think I just I saw you hanging out there, and I was like, "Why is this um, beautiful <laughs> violin player performance major hanging out with all the nerds?" Because that was the music technology floor. That's where I feel the most comfortable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, my locker was on that floor to be to be. That's why yeah, that that's makes so much sense. Yeah. All right. And the printing, free printing. I mean, as a college student, you just print everything. Yeah, I should have known. Yeah, that makes <laughs> way more sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, it had to be around those times. Yeah. Um, uh, when we were all kind of like vying for studio time and hanging out and looking at microphones and nerdy stuff like that yeah um but yeah i always thought you had like a a special affinity for like the recording arts and the production part of it because there were a couple a couple key performance majors especially string players who would hang out and we had a little little crew going yeah we had a crew yeah we that, had a crew. that was it so. and here we are today <laughs> crewing it up still to this day yeah crewing so it up I wanted you to talk about a little bit. Um, well, first, I guess, Moon itself. So Moon has become such a special place for me. I can remember the days when the the walls were actual brick colored. <laughs> yeah, <they> were, <laughs> it was like bright red. Yeah. Yep. And it's developed into this beautiful space, so creative. You really can, I mean, we recorded my last EP here. I mean, we've recorded yep. so many things here, mm -hmm. um, strings, and I'm so happy that I could have been a part of all of that. But, you know, I did my last EP here, and I think working with you on that and being in this space and having that history to build upon made it just that much better to be able to do that with you. So it's I'm honored to hear that. It's a, <laughs> always a pleasure when you're in the studio. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's been a while. We just passed our 10 year anniversary in October and <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna get into a little bit of that mm -hmm. like moon stuff later. First, cool. I wanna, you know, for those watching, you know, I want, to get to know you a little bit better maybe some people sure. don't know you super well so first Most let's just dive don't. right in what are your <laughs> astrological signs <laughs> uh signs yeah so do you know your sun your moon i know your rising? The, the main one what like is the it? birthday one is i'm a taurus you're a taurus oh. i have to say i'm like a textbook taurus <laughs> that's taurus. not good no i'm just kidding <laughs> most most people uh are like oh okay that yeah, makes sense it does make sense and a, i'm actually a taurus um i'm a taurus moon so maybe that's why Ooh, we that must mean something right taurus moon taurus moon taurus moon yeah what <laughs> i don't know what that means but yeah surely it's important um yeah i i have that app the yeah the one that like girls make you get right, at some point in right. your life yeah yeah so i have all the sec like the jupiter's fourth door house 
whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't remember. Your nodes, I'm, your house, your all of that. Yeah, That's great. But Taurus. Okay. So you're a Taurus. So that means you're very stubborn. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what? So where are you from? Where is your hometown? And what is your favorite part about where you're from? So <laughs> t- tell me. Uh, I'm from the suburbs of Philadelphia, a little town called Yardley. And it's it's right across from Trenton, New Jersey. Um, it's kind of like a little quaint, farmy, slow-moving town, um, but still accessible to like Philly and, and New York. So it's kind of an interesting place to live, to grow up. I mean, yeah. Um, and I'd have to say my favorite part of that is Wawa. Um, I knew you were going to say Wawa this. Wawa is certainly the shining star of the Philadelphia suburbs. and the <laughs> We love Wawa. Yeah, love Wawa. It's just it's just such a... Leave a comment if you love Wawa. Please, yeah. Oh, Taurus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Taharka. Taraka. We got a Taraka. Taraka. Yeah, he is. He is. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was just, you know, I have some like memories of, like biking the Wawa with my dad and we'd get there and like I remember I got that like uh the zebra stripe gum and like it was just such a fun like i just there were all these like little journeys and expeditions to the wawa on main street in my town it was just like the hangout like where everybody would go you'd see a friend there and they're like hey what's up yeah, yeah, yeah then camaraderie around wawa yeah and and also like there was just nothing happening in this town so it was like the only thing going on eventually they put a starbucks down the street right so i'd hang out there of course in high school because that was like the cool i remember my first time going to wawa i was in philadelphia i was Mm. visiting my brother he went to curtis institute of music so i was visiting him Mm -hmm. yes and the sandwich making machine like where you type it was the first time i had seen where you type in all the specs that you want like so customizable the touch screen yes yeah yep it's a very new wave wawa i love that Mm -hmm. i love a customizable sandwich yeah it really it just it just gets at some deep deeply rooted part of my soul that you can just select all of the parts of the sandwich that you want down to like how much mayonnaise you want on the sandwich you can choose like a little bit a little bit normal, a lot of it a lot of it <laughs> but the whole jar man. yeah <laughs> um i feel like yeah. you are there's some parallels life. between the camaraderie that you have that you found that you found comfort in at wawa that you're kind of creating here at moon i mean it sounds i it hope sounds so a little silly I don't but know. <laughs> doesn't sound like a stretch to me at all it's um wawa is all about community and we're all about community here at moon it's just the sandwich community and the morning coffee community versus the music community but right um yeah it's Hashtag all not an ad no not until they sponsor us so if you're watching <laughs> wawa <laughs> um sponsor us we will make some okay, great sponsored content so next question what mm-hmm. is your f- just just we're still in the getting to know lane sure. like a little bit more personal Yep. Um, what is your favorite bird? I, we've had a mm. lot of bird um, connections. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the quarantine <laughs> time it really brought out the bird watcher and myself and a lot of my friends. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Molly included. Rosemary, the bird that lived on my stoop yep. before my water, my plastic takeout <laughs> water container blew away to the neighbors. Um, yeah, yeah. I well that it. <laughs> Because you brought up Rosemary, that which Rosemary is Molly's friend who is a uh, morning dove, and I would have to like say, morning, like yeah, yeah, yeah. like morning <laughs> the loss of someone. That I'd have to say that those the morning doves are the the nearest and dearest to my heart right now. Okay, they are a little annoying. They're kind of like a the the pretty cousin of the pigeon. Um, they are. They're, yeah they, they have kind of a pigeon aesthetic in terms yeah. of their body like they're like a slim pigeon with right. uh, you know slightly just different you know mm-hmm. all birds all living creatures are beautiful but um they were my first the first bird that i like uh hung out with through the windows in my apartment <laughs> so um, okay so there's i a just New York i connection saw there. the first time i remember the first time i saw the morning doves i i, I like looked out the window and there were two of them perched on my little like windowsill and they were pretty much like making out 
honestly they were like kind of like one wow. was like pecking kind of like into the other's like neck feathers neck, looked like they were right. kind of like it was like cleaning helping them get, off or something right, yeah right. i don't know which was which like romantic if, honestly you know which was the male or female or who knows who whatever doesn't the gender. matter yeah. these 2021 yeah they can do whatever they want um but they were the f- and i saw that and i was just like wow this is beautiful and then i uh got some bird feeders on uh etsy and started feeding <laughs> them and i would you know i got really into it. i put the food out on their bird feeder and uh, eventually it just got to the point though because i got so into it that they like they told all their friends and there were just more and more uh morning doves that would come over and it got to there were like 14 at some point and they would right. just like flock over mm. and then i was like okay i think i have to stop feeding them when they just started like pooping everywhere Ambushed. it was just it was totally covered everything <laughs> was just covered in bird poop I was right like, okay right i can observe from a do distance. less yeah morning doves yeah 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 but you know okay that's that's Love just that. an example of how their culture doesn't exactly link up with our culture that that's okay it's, it's fine they probably uh have a much different feeling about bird do birds have human. feelings yeah of course <laughs> <laughs> i mean i believe that they do I, I think so i've seen them i don't know if it can be proven i've seen them they 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 have very specific habits and styles and i think they have feel- i mean i think all animals have feelings so yeah yeah i think so some people even say plants have feelings and they those, those are the same kind of people that um yeah like uh they they tend to <laughs> uh look at vegetarians kind of with with a little bit of scorn because the <laughs> vegetarians are they're still killing right. living things right right and, right and if a plant can feel something and who knows right i don't, know. I don't necessarily I mean, they may agree not, but i don't know if they have a nervous system but I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, final mm-hmm. get to know lane mm-hmm. moment. What is your go to? Oh. Well, we have yeah, some I'm comments. Seeing, I'm seeing. I'm seeing some best comments. sandwiches. Yeah, Wawa Squad here. Yeah, we got a Wawa Squad. Not to overdo Shout out to Cold Stone. it. Yeah, Cold Stone that's actually... true. I'm. Just, can you? How do you pronounce Taraka? Taraka. Taraka. Amazing. You singer, are 100 percent right. You you can't because just because all the <laughs> options are there. You kind of feel like, like, because when you're at the deli, you have to, like, tell the person. And if you were to list down, like, 12, like, can I have, like, yellow peppers, lettuce, tomato, jalapenos, spinach? Like, they would just look at you like, come on, dude. Yeah, but, like, okay, really? but that might be in Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, but in New York, you tell the bodega yeah, guy. Yeah, you could like, tell him, but I'm talking about my, the local deli. It's still, like, you if right, once right, you get okay, past, like, okay, six right, right. items, it's like, all right, okay. Like, do you really need the, like... <laughs> the the old bay seasoning on there um, or something yeah you always need old bay old bay is one of my favorite seasonings i actually need to buy more because i like <laughs> shake it on it's yeah. it's great i'm but not I that's not my point sandwich. but you're right you're right you just it, you can't overdo it you gotta commit to a uh aesthetic stay stay focused that's the real the real concept there is like stay focused to a, a theme right and just because you can get every single comment condiment doesn't mean uh doesn't right. mean you have to so I'm seeing I, I the more you talk about this, the more I'm seeing parallels between between um, Moon and yeah. Wawa. It's probably what anyway. I've uh, uh, built my entire life around if I think about it. Yeah. The more I think about it. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, all right. So Is that enough we getting are, to know me? You know, one thing that I have known to love about Moon Live is the game section. So when I was on the first episode of Moon Live, <laughs> some of you may remember this, but I was very nervous about the game section because, mm. you know, I don't know. And Lane was, you know, going to throw some wrenches in. You know, I was just a little nervous about it. So the rules are reversed now. This is okay? very much true. All yeah. right. They so couldn't we're gonna be play, more reversed. We're going to play our first game. Basic game. We've all played it. We all love it. We've all, you know, had our times with it. We're going to play Truth or Drink. Wow. We're going to play first, Truth or Drink. A Moon Live first. <laughs> so we have a lot of beverages here. <laughs> we have water, tequila, Pacifico, one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Pick your poison. Okay. Um, 
truth or drink, the object of the game is to just learn more about each other. Am I the only one that's going to be drinking? No, I'll I'll I'll, I'll Will participate. Will you drink in solidarity with I'll, me? I'll participate. Okay. I'll participate. Thank God. Um. So basically, for those that don't know, that are tuning in now live, um, we have two options. Okay. You can tell the truth. Okay. Or you can drink. <laughs> Got it. Mm-hmm. Okay. In order to get out of the question. The drinking will get yeah. me out of the answering. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. if you don't want to answer it, okay, just drink. I'm a pretty honest person, I gotta say. I know you are. Watch out. Um. Okay, so first question. A fly just uh, committed suicide in my tequila. <laughs> okay. Let's just give a little ha- prayer for I, him. I, okay, so have you ever used the studio in order uh-huh. to get out of a date? And by use the studio, I mean saying that you have a session, you have a gig, you have something in order to last minute get out of a date. Uh, That's a good question. Hmm. No, I I think that other people are the ones that are usually trying to get out of the date with me. (laughs) I've never um, I've never bailed on somebody last minute because I other I would have just I'm the kind of person like I wouldn't have scheduled a date in the first place if I didn't want to go on a date. Right, with but you know, cold feet, whatever. I've used it to get out of many commitments. Commitments, okay. But we'll call not a date. It a commitments, <laughs> not a date. Okay. But yeah, plenty. All uh, only with with friends and acquaintances, though. I'll just yeah. Of okay. course. I mean, you know. I I not, have. I definitely have. Use us <laughs> for that, please, in your life. It, yeah. We're a great resource. Um, I have a, I, I can't. Okay. I'll I'll like <laughs> post a photo of you just to just to prove that you're here working on music. Just that's yeah, sorry. Funny. Deep in a session right now. We just Real, I got totally a session. Totally hit a stride, flow state right now. I'm so I'm so <laughs> sorry. Um, rain check. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Um. Next I'm question. Drink a little bit anyway, though. Who do you think is the worst dressed person in this room? <laughs> in this room? Mm-hmm. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I I like oh. what everyone is is wearing. But yeah, I'll drink because we'll drink. All it's right. all everybody. Everybody's different. I. What was you're, the last thing? Uh, you're the best dressed person in this room. Let me oh, say that before I drink. <laughs> Thanks. What was the last thing you searched for on your phone? Ooh. You don't have your phone with you, do you? You want me to get it? Is it close by? It's in the booth. Is it being used? Right. It might be being used. We can, we can, we can do this. Oh, that's it. You're, you are in here. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, everyone. Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. Were <laughs> <laughs> you waiting for somebody to open the door? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, how do I find out? I have to I go to the search. I mean. Let me see. It might be hard to find on your phone. Sometimes I have, like, search. Under. Oh, no, that was Search the, things, like just listed there if you don't have it listed then it might be hard to find how do i do it oh yeah okay all right let's go to the next one okay well well, this one this one will be a good one okay what was the last text you received what did it say (laughs) you don't have to say who it was from in terms of privacy but i don't think there was anything juicy oh oh my friend nils just texted me two minutes ago hey how's it going i'm celebrating my birthday on the 12th with some barbecue in the backyard are you in town want to come by fantastic yeah, a birthday a invite you might need invite. to say that you have a session in order to get out of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry i'm real deep in a session can't can't make it can't come sorry enjoy your birthday it's like he's like oh no it's on the it's later this this month oh okay yeah i think i have a session then too <laughs> no nils i'll be there if you're hanging out all right who is the most difficult person you've worked with in a session mm. Ooh, saucy bottoms up y'all we'll drink all right we'll drink to that one um Oof. what is the who's your let's just let's just go with this one who's yep. your favorite family member whoa favorite <laughs> family member oh man 
obviously, I can't say that, right? Because I don't have any a favorite, but I'll, I'll drink anyway Cheers. just to get me out of that. They're all wonderful. Love the Lane fam. <laughs> um, have you ever broken up with someone in order to get out of buying them holiday presents? <laughs> No. Christmas <laughs> what? you know you're all about these like uh the the the, the commitment uh, 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 don't turn this around <laughs> do you try to get out of a lot of things in your relationships with bad excuses <laughs> I mean I try to get out of I'm I've like, given oh, bad yeah, presents I, I'm you know like <laughs> I, but no, I've never broken up with someone to get out of a okay. gift giving experience. No. Um, <laughs> le- let's see. If you, um, let's do two more. Okay. Most oh. illegal thing that you've done. <laughs> Surely drugs. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. I'll drink yeah. anyway. All I'll right. just do more drugs now. <laughs> Because I don't do anything drugs. illegal that like hurts anybody. That's not cool. Right. I don't just do a light, just that... a light drug. Just a light, you yeah, know, test a... it out, see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. it's just for science. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 For science. For that's all. Absolutely. And then finally, what was your first impression of me? Mm. <laughs> Uber talented and beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I think I heard rumors about you before we actually met. Rumors? The, yeah, because you were like, like my worst nightmare. the violin player. Like, everybody was like, Molly's like, the shit. Yeah, so I mean, shit, I, okay. I had kind of like a preconceived like thing. So when I met you, it's like, you're already, you're already legendary. Wow. Yeah. Wow, okay. Whew. And this was, you know, it's a long time ago. It was a long time ago. I know that one was a stretch when I wrote it. I was like, he might not remember that. I remember. All right, folks. That was Truth or Drink. Truth or Drink. We might have to use that. We might have to Truth or Drink. Yeah. Comment if, uh, if you liked that segment. Or, yeah, or, or from the audience. We could get a Truth or Drink from the audience. Oh, yeah. Because we do see the things. All I'll right. So there. next segment, um, mm-hmm. I just want to kind of talk about, you know, I've entitled it Producer Talk. Ooh. Producer Talk. Oh. 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 <laughs> All right. So produ- producing, production, mm-hmm. working on music, it's kind of this elusive thing yep. that I feel like a lot of people have a lot of ideas about. They may not know what it is, yep. et cetera, et cetera. So kind of want to dive into some of those elements. Sure. Um, what... And I know you work with a lot of artists, and I know Mm. that Moon is developing an amazing community around artists and fostering new music and just just the whole development of artists, which is an amazing trajectory that Moon is going on right now. Love that. And I love that I'm also a part of that. Thank you. (laughs) Of course. Yeah. Um, What? With that said, what is the hardest part about working with a new artist? Mm. part i think the hardest part i mean it's all challenging <laughs> just kidding <Yeah. laughs> it's um like there are a lot of challenges but they're all they're all fun challenges but i i think every artist is very different in uh not just like their music but how they make their music so mm-hmm. because we're very in the process of music making like the it, it just um it's a much different type of uh, workflow than like a factory, you know, like that would be like the kind of obvious, uh, very objective, like other extreme pole of that. So Mm -hmm. just, um, and by factory, like, like where you have, like, there's, there's a, there's an assembly line, you know, exactly how you're going to get from a, point a to point b right have your finished product so like formulaic music making yeah and yes and for us like we try to just it's the exact opposite of that because it's every artist deserves to be treated like their process is gospel Mm -hmm. you know and and they deserve to uh, make their music the way they want to because not even for any kind of ego perspective but just because like if you don't 
it's not going to be good. It's right. just not going to be what they have in mind. And then right. why are you even doing it? That's right. the point. Right. You know, this is we're trying to make art. Right. So and I, I love that yeah. about you um, working with you. I think when I was making my EP, one thing is all the preconceived notions that I have about, mm-hmm. oh, you're a violinist. You play for people. You do this and then kind of blossoming and, you know, trying a new thing, basically producing and all that stuff with you. So I love that you bring that comfortability to like any insecurities or nervousness that an artist would have coming into mm-hmm. working with new people and that's great that you have that perspective i appreciate that yeah, yeah i think it takes a certain like it's one of those things that i i think it just takes a certain amount of time you know once you can like once you learn the rules you can break them and not like fuck everything up right. you know you can just right. kind of like get a little looser with it and that's mm-hmm. what makes me comfortable that's what makes most of the people that I work with comfortable when mm-hmm. you're not like so locked into some rigid like oh no we, of course we can't like not have a click track on for this song or right. something like my professor told me you can't do that you know yeah. it's like break the rules yeah you know no you just click need track to... <laughs> let's go wild <laughs> <laughs> exactly you know it's just but yeah everyone's different everyone everyone's art and music deserves a different process and, right. and that's that's probably just like I wouldn't even say it's the hardest it's just like uh it, it can just be a challenge but that's why we're here is to be right. challenged and, and do awesome. something fun and different um what do you star strive for in good songwriting like in, mm. in production and songwriting like what are some of the key elements that you maybe like the lane signature or what what do you <laughs> what do you kind of like really strive to achieve and think about when you're starting from scratch, writing from scratch, producing from scratch. <sighs> honesty, just honesty. You know, just something real that's going to like cut a little bit. You know, I think a lot about like like uh when I when I make music, I tend to like pull on a lot of my like comedy loving roots and I think like the best comedy that or my favorite comedy is things that just like make you say like wow like i've been i i know that feeling so well Mm -hmm. but i've never put it into words Mm. i've never thought about it that way i've never Mm -hmm. like even really realized it and i've never heard anybody just like the intangibles yeah it's just it's in there you're living it every day you know it so intimately but but nobody's ever said it right and and that's what i'm always looking for because i think that's really the stuff that that cuts and, right and that's kind of like it, it starts to touch on the universality of like pop music or like versus non-pop music mm-hmm. i don't know you know it's like a lot of the things people talk about with pop music it's like i don't really think about pop music like um it has to sound like some bubblegum top 40 stuff i just think about it like it's something that everyone can appreciate mm-hmm. and it's like kind of like universal i think the more universal some a thought is right the better you know absolutely that's a kind of hotly debated thing but, yeah but yeah no it's just i like, love pop music i love listening yeah. to the radio um i love like that universality of like imagining everyone listening to the radio at once yeah <laughs> and there's something cool about just the fact that like it's like we were just like walking around and you were singing the peaches song by justin bieber I just, I mean, I yeah i mean there's just something cool <laughs> so catchy so completely <laughs> outside the sphere of the music even there was just something cool that we could connect on that song right because we both knew the song knew so the that's song. T- speaking more to the universality of right. like the the marketing and the distribution of the music but mm-hmm. um but that's just cool you know why would you not want to strive to like reach more people right right so building on top of that what is a way that you kind of get your creativity your creative mojo the mm. juices how do you get <laughs> that flowing like what going into a session you had a late night you're tired you're working with somebody you're like "Eh." how do you go in fresh and get your mind right to create something new and relatable and universal and Mm -hmm. intangible do you have a routine (laughs) (laughs) do you have a routine do you have like what what's your creative process like trying to think but i mean really i think 
the the most uh, procedural thing in that process is no, there's like no uh, defined pre preconceived like strategy. It's really just hanging out with the person for like 45 minutes to an hour before we even open pro tools or that, open this is Ableton. true i can attest to this he does <laughs> it's the do most this. important part yeah. you know if we're gonna really if we're just going into the studio to like lay down some parts and we know exactly what we're doing like yeah maybe maybe we just get into it and get the job done but if we're gonna like write a song or like make something some art you know it's like yeah i i really i i tend to do that every single time and, mm -hmm. and just um i i think it's good to just get on the same wavelength with mm -hmm. people just just like see what's been going on what's on somebody's mind mm -hmm. what's on my mind get Connect that out there on a personal level yeah yeah in yeah. order to dive in yeah because especially you know if there's like a brief it's a little different you know if there's like a hey we have to make this thing that sounds like this and has these themes it's a little different but if we're just sitting down to like work on something new yeah gotta get get some commonality mm-hmm Oh, we're getting a cue from our uh, oh, impromptu. Oh, I forgot to say it. I forgot to say it. Well, it's kind of late. <laughs> well, anyway, so I had this really cool idea, which Josh. we will say now. Thank you. Shout out, Josh. Josh is incredible. <laughs> um, an idea that I just totally skipped over, even though it's in big, bold letters that I wrote. OK. OK. So it's a it's a it's a collective drinking word. So when you see this word, uh -huh. you can take a sip of your of your beverage. Because I was hoping that we could Out all there. get lit together. You know, I'm s there's still plenty of litness uh, available here. <laughs> litness I'm just tech. gonna open up the all right. So Ornitos. and and uh, I don't know Jason Blint, but thanks for asking. Um, Taraka, I gotta I gotta we, this is look just him like, up. I'm sure we have Taraka's some mutual friends. now are like third person here. You know. Taraka, this one's Incredible for you. singer, songwriter. I've worked with him for years. He's awesome. Cool. Okay, so I did post on Instagram for people to send in questions. So I've been kind of okay. um, weaving those in and out. But one person that did submit a question, Benji, who we just recently did a session with for my album. Hell yeah. <laughs> Um, amazing drummer, Which was, percussionist. That was an amazing session. That yes. Was, that was so much fun. Yeah, he killed it. Played the cajon. He played the goat toes, y'all. Some of my literal that's my favorite instrument. Literal instrument. Yeah. And they're like literal like nails. Yeah. They're and I don't think that they are. I think they're a pretty uh, how should I say this like like a pita friendly oh, instrument because I, I think they just mm. uh, they don't cut off the toes of the goat. No, they're they're, they're nails. It's just the nails. They need a, a manicure. Which, it's interesting because you know nails are such a cultural icon mm -hmm. right now. I just cut my nails today. Maybe we could. I mean, I've I've never had long nails because I play violin, but right. Maybe we could make like a like a, a nails human nail thing with human. Nails. I don't want any human nails anywhere near but, me no but you have goat nails what's the difference did you see the lady who was in the world the guinness world record i book, did uh for longest nails i when i was a kid i was obsessed with the guinness book of world records yeah and I think she we all was had that she's been in that it's gross. book as the longest yeah. nails for years it's a no 20 for me, years dog. plus it's she just cut no, them off no. at the very end of a, a pandemic she just like Ooh. like four months ago she went to like a oh wow esthetician or something and they used like a dremel tool and like shaved through and just cut all of them off anyway yeah it was just pretty gross so they were like dangling they were like go all the way down to the floor yeah they were a lot and then curl up and ugh. anyway yeah um so this question comes we could from buy them off of her though and make some we could some lady <laughs> nails it's a good it's a percussion instrument yeah um what what's like one of the hardest sessions you've done and like what makes mm. a session kind of difficult like what what are some of the factors that create like a hard session a hard session I, I think the the sessions I've most been challenged by are um well there's different types of challenges like the 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 biggest challenges on an engineering level have been like 
big live jazz sessions where there's like a full mm. like basically like a mini orchestra of right. all different instruments because like, jazz music always has so many different players so many yeah. things going on everyone has and it has the to most be major recorded ego at the ever. same time well i don't know i'm just about kidding that last i'm just part. kidding i'm just kidding <laughs> maybe so in some rooms <laughs> yeah <laughs> but no that that's just throwing shade for fun sure 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 the, the, but the the challenge on an engineering level is like everybody's playing at the same time right and you have to that's what I mean. Capture it together I mean, that's in the I same mean. room without it just sounding like ass. So right, it just sounds like chaos. Yeah, it can <laughs> very easily <laughs> can be like, whoa, that's intense. Right. But, um, but on like a a, a a creative level, I mean, I think like writing songs can be. It's just a different part of your brain. It's like left brain, right brain, completely. You know the right. And I'm a very technical kind of like engineering minded you type are. person. That's very Taurus really it is okay it good is. to know <laughs> it is yeah so i mean that, that that's like i think the natural side and that's why like even when i get into the more creative sides of like writing and producing projects it's like a lot of that time i'm not necessarily the one in the room like writing the lyrics and i just mm-hmm. just because that's like not my true main calling like sometimes i'll right. whip out a verse and stuff if i need to but it's just I'm all about assembling the team of the right people doing the right things. Right. And right. a lot of times I'm the one making the beat, but I'll, you know, get somebody to help me make the program, the drums, or I'll have a writer Delegating. in with the artist. Yeah. Just it's, it's about assembling the right people and yeah. the right team together right. to, to just make the thing as best as you, you can make it. And there's definitely an art to that. I think so. Finding people that work well together. Yeah. I think, when I'm contracting and when I'm assembling groups Mm -hmm. and like when we've worked together for string players and stuff like finding string players that know how to play this type of music or, you know, can hang, you know, being able to do that is such a key thing and being able to see that in people and what blends well. Right. Is a very important skill. Yeah. You're kind of like foreseeing how the session is going to go based Mm -hmm. on like what, what's the music, what is this person's skills and what's their vibe? You right, know? right. Are they, are they going to be good in this session? Right. And that is a very creative skill. It's, a, it's like you're casting the session. You are. Yeah. You absolutely are. And it's it can really make important. or break an entire thing. You get someone yeah. on the session um, that has a bad attitude or is like dominating the whole thing. Yeah. You're like, uh oh. How do you handle that? I don't hire those people. Oh, okay. get the ego, drop the ego at the door. <laughs> there you go. I like that. But you know, I like that. What? 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 What time is it? Oh. Okay. Awesome. You got some time. We're doing great. Okay. We're doing great on time. <laughs> <laughs> um. Final question of this segment. Okay. How do you celebrate a successful session with an artist? Mm. Do you celebrate it internally by yourself and you go home and you kind of like bask in that moment? Mm. I know I've definitely left sessions and been like, holy shit, that was awesome. And then I've like thought about it for days and days. And then, you know, you'll definitely have the hang afterwards. You grab a beer, do whatever. What's the lane style (laughs) of celebrating a session? Well, um, as a producer, I, I kind of, try to be a chameleon and like i i'm not gonna do something that makes me happy if it doesn't make somebody else like the artist happy but if it were purely up to me yeah yeah um Xion. probably <laughs> you know we just got Xion. josh just had his first Xion. Xion is a yesterday yeah noodles Ta- Ta- taiwanese right well or I think it's like the Sichuan region of okay, so China. Got it. I think, but yeah, it's like I think it's north northwest China. Okay. But Xi'an province, province is the area itself. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, he loves Xi'an, y'all. It's, Send him a gift card if you want. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, we. I'd go to Xi'an and celebrate, or I'd like, you know, get some drinks and play some pool or something. You know, that that's always fun. Smoke a joint. Yeah whatever chill yeah yeah just just hang reflect reflect and and say hey thanks thanks for being part of this that was dope yeah and then because on to the next uh phase i find that 
in sessions, there's always something that's like, I'm just imagining kind of like a, a tornado or something. There's, mm-hmm. a, there's always some sort of an element of chaos in a session. Uh-huh. So when you kind of like work through that and then you get to the other end and then you foster that like vibe at the end, it makes it it's mm-hmm. so important for yes what you just created but also the next phase or like the next one with somebody or the next thing and i think that yeah. how you leave a session is just as important yeah. as the session itself because it allows totally the possibilities of what's next i think i mean that's such a good concept to to keep in mind because like it's also something i think about with music it's like when you're assembling the the track listing on an album or something Mm -hmm. it's like you have to think about the first impression and the last impression because Mm -hmm. the last impression is first impression is you know Mm -hmm. first thing they're gonna hear Mm -hmm. obviously Mm -hmm. everybody knows that but the last impression the recent (laughs) people don't talk about that the recency effect yeah sure i've never heard that yeah it's it's, um yeah I double majored in psychology. (laughs) I did not know that. But the recency effect is basically something that is like naturally we remember things that were like the most recent. It's also that the the antithesis of that would just be the first, the first thing you see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sometimes when I would think about going to audition or casting or something Uh like when you're the last one, it's, or when you're playing an audition, like the last person that the person that the judges saw they yeah. will there will there will be an element of that that, they, that, that that's what's gonna it's stick. very fresh in their mind yeah yeah yeah. It, it, yeah it only makes sense you know it's like the uh that's the way our brains work you know we're gonna remember that thing yeah. because it's like the most recent thing it's kind of a stupid name for it you know not yeah. to like down not to throw shade at I the mean, I psychology it, community, I, but like the recency effect, I could have thought of that. The recency. Well, it kind of reminds yeah, you of that movie, recent. but the butterfly effect starring Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> yeah, that's a more creative. Well, it was Ashton Kutcher, right? Yeah, I never saw it, but I know that it was Ashton Kutcher. I did. I should see it. I heard it was good, actually. I think it was all right. But that's like a, a kind of a magnitude, like this thing affects this thing, and then it gets like real. Uh, I was thinking about that just today <laughs> when I was crossing the street. And just <laughs> like this biker was crossing me and I mm-hmm. was like, what if I walked a little bit faster and he hit me? Like how that would change the whole course of, all, uh, you know, all the, whatever. Uh, you know? Yeah. It, did you do it? Did I do what? Walk faster so he would hit you? No. Oh. I'm here, aren't I? Ashton Kutcher would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. Thank you for watching Producer Talk. What we're going to segue into now is our second game session. Oh, cool. Yeah. Because what is Moon Live without a couple game sessions, right? Gotta be, yeah. This one we're going to do Never Have I Ever. And shout out to our amazing Moon crew. These signs were made today. Wow. Last minute. Mm-hmm. Woo! Yeah. These are the first props I think we've ever had on the show. This is awesome. Whoa. Good work. Nice and big, folks. All <laughs> right. They're pencils. So, That's pencils. Creative. Very creative. Ooh. Okay. Sustainable. Yep. All right. So we're going to play Never Have I Ever. You know, you know how to play. Can you refresh my memory? Yes, I can. <laughs> um, but will I? No. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> if you've done it, yep. you're going to put up. I have. I have. And if you haven't, I have never. Okay. That's it? Yep. That's easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can do that. That tequila is strong, I have to say. The tequila is strong. A little lit right now. It's all going according to plan. Okay. (laughs) I'm ready. All right, so we're going to start. I I feel like I should have done more of these. I mean, this is actually a great tour game. So fun, Mm. fun game about never have I ever. One of my favorite moments of playing this game was in um, Singapore on tour with Clean Bandit. And we were going, we had a police escort. And Whoa. I've never had a police escort before. It's getting Going to where? From to the, the stadium? We oh, were to going, the show. Yeah, we were going yep. from our hotel to the show. And we had wow. a police escort. And so it's they so were badass. driving us through the traffic there is like insane. The traffic yeah. there is wild. 
Um, mm -hmm. And while we were doing this whole thing, I remember Takashi Six Nine came on the radio. First of all, very oh, well. strange. Okay. In Singapore. Maybe yeah. what we we're listening to. I don't know. He was pretty big. Yeah. Turned and, out to be um, like a rapist, right? What? I think he turned out to be a pedophile or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. And something weird. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and then. <laughs> so Yasmin Green, she is one of the singers in Clean Bandit. She is yep. absolutely hilarious, but she is the queen of tour games. Cool. And a lot of these games. Yasmin Green. Yeah. So Yazzie. Shout Yazzie out Fierce. in the comments if you're here. Yes, she's amazing. Yazzie and Fierce. she yeah. has these amazing Never Have I Ever is like Would You Rather is <laughs> like Truth or Drinks, like all that stuff. She's the cool. queen of tour games, and she has the best ones. Like. Great. They're great. So this this game reminds me of that that moment. Did she inform this game? Like, can we do we owe it to her for this happening right now? Maybe. Okay. Because I don't think I've ever actually played never. I've heard about it, but I don't think I've ever played never. Have really? I ever. So normally you play with ten fingers and you put them down and then uh, the end you that's lose right. whatever. Okay. Excuse me. Sure. All right. So we're gonna start just kind of like chill. Um, never have I ever. Forged a signature on an important document. <laughs> and I'm going to play too. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. You haven't? No. Okay, I have. I mean, maybe like a report card in like middle school okay, or something. Okay, well then. Is that important enough to. That's important. Okay, I have them. <laughs> that's that. See, that's the story that we need. Report card. Were you ashamed of your grades? Maybe at some point. I was I was really good in like elementary school and I just had some shitty teachers. My middle school sucked and then all of a sudden it just started plummeting. Like I was like a nerd in elementary school. And then, you know, but it it really taught me like the importance of education because yeah. like all of a sudden I just had some teachers who like didn't give a shit and I just like tuned out. Yeah. Probably have some like undiagnosed ADD or whatever and like it was just like they just didn't care and i was used to like a little more uh hands-on approach and, right. and then just all of a sudden like i flunked out of like algebra one or something <laughs> but yeah I, I i feel like maybe i did a little bit of forging hey <laughs> our, our friend taraka <laughs> our friend taraka in the thing okay um yeah, we're definitely smoking joint after this never yeah. have i ever lied about a computer malfunction in order to get out of a zoom or any sort of like <laughs> deadline in terms of like sending files this is a, such a common theme in the, <laughs> the 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 using the like studio or some tech malfunction to get out of a, a date or some prior commitment i think we no, need I mean, to I, I have a talk about you not committing yourself to to things that you maybe don't want to be a part issues, of okay well all right it, maybe I'm, all right i'm not saying anything i'm just saying maybe uh maybe stop agreeing to bullshit uh no tasks. that is a theme that is a theme <laughs> And or you think that I am non-committal? That, that, see, that's what it is. I'm. I'm wondering about no, no, no. you. I'm this very isn't committal. About me, Lane. I actually really Lane? get pissed off when people like like uh, flake. Exactly. You know, I hate flakes because so, like say, so if, if you don't want to do it, just up. say you don't want to do it. Put the paddle up. I have never because I'm not a fucking flake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I've been like, oh, I'm I, cool I with can't. Flake stem. No, I with, actually. Okay, so just just to my own defense, <laughs> yeah. and this is in reference to a recent um like Zoom meeting that I had to do. Let me just say real quick. At nine people, in the morning, I couldn't get away with that because people know I'm like, I'm tech. I'm the one people call if they have tech problems. Like, they're I'm not. What are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm just no, saying I'm it, it's not gonna work. <laughs> they're gonna be like, oh yeah, you can't get your Zoom input working well oh yeah so for <laughs> me studio owner for me it was yeah. that somebody wanted to have like a visual like meeting at like uh -huh. nine in the morning yeah r kind of recently and i was like no and i was like my camera's not working at and they were like so we did it on the phone oh easy so you didn't flake you just, no i just said you just my said, camera's not working why what was the problem because i i didn't want to you weren't made up yet well not like made up i just i just <laughs> didn't want to i didn't want to do the visual okay fair that's fine all right but like why 
why didn't you just say like hey uh can we just do the phone call i'm like not feeling like i want to like present my face because <laughs> on my iPhone because of today. the i don't know i, I mean Yet, that's a that's a too good early. that's a good uh it's a good point. I mean, you know, honesty point. is just my, I'm I'm all about honesty and that's but my it's policy. It's not like not okay. I'm not not honest. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not start any rumors here. No, sure, sure, sure. But yeah, I mean, the the worst you could ever look is a thousand times better than someone like me will ever look. So it's like Aww. I've just but but. I just don't care anymore. Like I, I almost answered like Diego, our studio manager called me today. And I was literally in the shower. He, he FaceTime video with me and I was literally in the shower and I was like contemplating taking it. Cause I was like, I don't give a fuck. Like who cares? Right. right. But then I, I put it down. I was like, okay, I'll just call him right after it can wait two minutes. Right. But like, all I'm saying is, yeah, no, I get it. You don't need to noted. be insecure about that. Cause nobody's no, going to judge you noted. for like, not being uh but you know you're you're a model most of us aren't like don't, we yeah, don't but have that, that that's literally so like arbitrary it has nothing to do with like how i think in my mind like i could be a well, model good, yes good, but like good. in my mind i'm like i feel crusty and like lame right now Always? at nine in the morning oh at nine in the morning when i yeah, want to have yeah. a visual well so does everybody that's just human human you can that's that's what to me that's what that's saying is like you can be a fucking supermodel and you wake up at nine in the morning without your teeth brushed yet and right, like right. you haven't like picked out your like eye booger and you're gonna feel <laughs> the same as all other fucking humans on the Aww. entire earth at least that's my feeling i don't know love that yeah love that yeah okay um never <laughs> Never another just like basic easy one. Never mm. have I ever broken a major bone or mm. like mu- uh, bone. Never. You've broken a bone. My toe. Really? Yeah. Which toe? Um, my ring toe on my left foot. <laughs> Your ring toe. <laughs> You know exactly which toe I'm talking about. No. Your ring you toe. You know exactly which toe. Do you I have mean. toe rings on right now? <laughs> so many. <laughs> I have so many toe rings on. Wow. No. No. I'm. When sorry. I, if I ever get this married one. or engaged, I'm putting the ring on my ring toe. <laughs> Fuck the ring finger. I'm gonna be like, well, that's your assumption that you want me to wear it. Well, on my I would have finger. said fourth toe, but people wouldn't know that. I mean, I'm just thinking of fingers. Yeah, yeah, you know? I get. I know exactly which toe you're talking about, See? and I like that. But how did See? you break just that one? Um, you think I if was, something like I was in my dorm room or my do- <laughs> my dorm at NYU, and I jumped yeah. over a like ottoman thing, and I tripped because I was with a bunch of people playing video games. Okay. And I tripped over a controller, and I broke the toe i think um all right definitely until, until all right so we're gonna get a little bit more saucy here now that we've yeah been. check us out we appreciate your your comments this is awesome and the emojis i didn't even know that emoji existed that's i gotta check out that face palm emoji. all right okay so um let's go with like never have i ever cheated in a relationship Hmm. Do I have to say anything? And I, I guess just, I'm not a cheater. But I'm not I, a cheater either. I the the most I've cheated it, it was making out with someone, and I admit it and I own it. And I, you know, this is actually a part of a bigger conversation on what constitutes cheating and yeah. what's in relationships and yeah. emotional cheating and right, right. And I've learned a lot since that experience. Great. But um, that's all you can ask for. Yeah. There you go. Yeah um let's see never have i ever um like read someone's text messages or like in, in i feel like let me just go back to that i feel like that was just an excuse for you to say that you have never cheated on anybody on camera <laughs> it, the, the, you Whoa. you feel, felt if- very proud about saying i have never and then you moved you just swiftly <laughs> moved moved on right on from that feel like you're gonna use that little snippet as uh evidence at some point in the future i'm just pointing it out why are you making me out to be the way that you are (laughs) uh, we we, uh, 
you know, we've, we've never have I ever shoplifted. I have never. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember though once, and and uh, I, I have a story about this. You have too. a story too, okay? But I, I wouldn't consider it shoplifting. When I was like probably like eight or ten years old, I same was uh it, it, in a bed bath and beyond mm-hmm. and i think i was just like playing with like a napkin ring <laughs> or something and i like this was totally innocuous and i didn't really know what was going on because i was a baby or whatever you'd call it well you're an eight-year-old yeah i don't know what i'm yeah not a big kids guy but you know <laughs> as a kid <laughs> <laughs> young uh and and uh i think my my mom or my dad realized that i had this in my possession as we Wait, were driving this is like home the same story as mine really yeah good parenting shout out good parenting uh if, if you're watching thank you mom and dad they, they saw that i had this thing that we hadn't paid for that I, like mine was a, snuck was out. a cadbury egg thing the chocolate yeah. egg, yeah. Well, they made. I took it from they, a Michael's. They turned the car around and we had to go back in. I returned it and said, "I'm sorry, I accidentally stole this or something like yep. that." And uh, yep. yeah, that's so weird that we have the same story because I stole. I think this candy. is one of those things that like seek like they have secret parent conventions where they all talk about this thing <laughs> like like before like facebook groups they must have had some parenting circles they all like kind of talked about and said like yeah you got to do that once because take them back everybody's gonna do that take- yeah right <laughs> mine was definitely candy like a i think i remember i took it and i was and then i i was eating it in the back seat um <laughs> and then we it was like Molly. When did they realize that you? I don't know. Were See, eating and then this goes kind of goes back to like I'm pretty sure that this happened. Yeah. And it's like those like really remote memories where you're like, did this happen? Am I making this up? Was this a dream? Did I right. like? Either but, way, it's yeah. a good it's a good thing. Even if it was a dream, it means that there was some something was instilled right. in you that that was and like, it was it was go back horrible. Bring it back. Oh, but, really? I mean, I, I felt really bad. Is what I meant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Never have I ever drunk texted an ex. Like, sobby, sobby thing. Uh, I wasn't, I don't get that sobby, but I've definitely I have. texted an But I, not, not lately, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's... No, what did you say? What? How did it go? What? what like? What happened? Do we, no, it's been a while. Receipts? It's been a, it's been a while. I've I've. Uh, it's been a while. I've um. All I'll say is that the uh, pandemic era was a trying time for not texting exes, and I have uh, pretty successfully persevered through yeah. that, and I'm proud of myself. Um, let's just do a couple more. Yep. Um, never have I ever been to a strip club. Oh, I've definitely been to a strip club. I love have. strip clubs. I've been. My favorite um, strip club town has to be uh, New Orleans, though. Oh my god! Yeah, I've never club. been. To Though one in New they, they say about they say Atlanta's really. Oh, good. Atlanta! I've never been to Atlanta. It's funny because the strip club community in atlanta is so tied with the hip-hop yeah. community yeah. and it's actually like if Benji, you want to become watching, i'm gonna go down there and if, we're gonna hit some clubs <laughs> if you like if you want to get your music out there and heard oh that's where you go actually getting it played at strip clubs yeah is a major get in with part. the strip club djs and they'll spin your that's a great you have to call. yeah yeah i actually went hmm. to a place in germany whoa um, and it was like the worst experience of my life. I actually a, it was, a German strip club. It was horrible. It was the hmm. it was it was terrible. I it was so it was so never want to go there. Why? And what was so bad about it? Because the women were very much like not because they're like on one side of it they're into really freaky shit in Germany, but on the other right. side of it it was a part of if the if it's not like that scene right I could see it getting real weird. Cause, right, so cause they're we also were, very buttoned up and like proper. Right, so we were on tour yeah. and we had like a night out. We were in this one like area of Germany and we went to this place and 
as a group and it was just really like awful to like how much the women like really did not want to be there they were not oh, happy sucks. it was yeah, like no, yeah and sucks. it was awful and i just remember that sucks being, no matter like, what yeah i was like uh eh. but i feel like that's that that exists that exists everywhere though and it's, not, and it's just not where yeah. you want to be it's no. just that's sad but like that. there's also other Oh, well, we're very sex worker positive here, and anyone, you, you know, it's just like you, you shouldn't have to feel bad about that. It shouldn't be a shameful right. thing to do. It's a beautiful thing, but right. it's, uh, you know, the world, the world is catching up to that. Yes, slowly. absolutely. Yeah. Um, And then let's just, which <laughs> one do I want to do next? Hmm. Um, I don't know which one to end on a good, on a good note. Um, I guess never have I ever, we'll end with like a really like juicy one. Never have I ever had a one night stand. What constitutes a one night stand though? It just means you meet the person. Yeah. You do the deed. Yeah. And then that's it. That's what constitutes it though, that you never see that person again. That's what's always given me a little pause about mm-hmm. that phrase is because mm-hmm. like really to me right or no yeah it yeah. seems to me that <laughs> right the, it's like you do it and then that's it <laughs> it seems that the 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 thing that constitutes the term one night stand is that you don't do it again which just means you don't want to do it again so like no, no. It, it, why not well because sometimes if it, it was could great be, why wouldn't you call the it person could be back? great but it could be because it's nobody's gonna prioritize time. like oh we have to keep it as a one-night stand because it's like this romantic term like if it was great you're gonna get the person's fucking number or their instagram <laughs> or something so At like really instagram. it just to me it sounds like it was just bad so you're just okay Right. Please leave and don't I think there's look levels the to eyes. this. I think there's levels yeah. to this. I think it's an outdated term, to be honest. That's my feeling on it. Okay. But I've done it, and okay. it hasn't been good enough or fun enough, or there hasn't been a connection that I was like, okay. Right. Right. Good luck with your life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you around. But you know, is if you know if you have a connection, you're you, why would you just say, oh well, right? It was a one night stand. Well, like, I think some let's people not, let's not trade. Uh, I think some people information. do <laughs> seek that out. Yeah, they have. They should go to therapy. They those should. people. They, they, they should. There's something there that they Absolutely. need to work through because, uh, I mean, listen, anonymity mm-hmm. can be a turn on for some people, and that's cool. Mm-hmm. But um, I I feel like that's a different concept. Yeah. It, it, you know, that might be preconceived that there was the expectation of anonymity before you're in that scenario. Right. Right. I don't know. But yeah, I think it's a little outdated. I think, well, outdated or just has a negative implication that nobody talks about. Right. Nobody acknowledges. Right. Okay, cool. I like that. Or if you, if the person leaves that night before you even have the next, the morning after, then maybe there is, some hope for that term maybe it's like oh well they just left and i didn't even i was so drunk i couldn't even right. ask for their <laughs> digits right right right, right, right. <laughs> maybe that's a thing i don't know but it's it it's not my usual it's not it's your only, mo no it's not well what does mo stand for by the way i think it's police jargon for motive oh. like a detective jargon more more so right, but like right. like like you if you're researching a crime, you want to know what the motive was. Right. Why would they do this? So what would be human... the motive behind a what? Wow. Modus Thank operandi, you, the voice Josh. of God. Thank if that you, didn't Josh. get to the stream, modus operandi is modus the, operandi. I think that's Latin, right? Is that Latin? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> God says yes. Um, All right. Well, these yeah. never have I ever have been really fun. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. Um, this is we're gonna have to play. Good we're gonna have to the use these segment. signs again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and normally, never have I ever gets very, very intense mm-hmm. and kind Why? of gritty very fast. Really? So I tried to keep it. Oh, oh, oh. You know, because part of the game when you're playing with a group of people <laughs> is that you're trying to knock someone out. So you really go. It's a more competitive. Right. Spirit. So you'll be like, oh, I never I have I ever dyed my hair. And like you're with. And you know, everybody has. Vanessa's dyed, dyed, hair. dyed her hair yeah. a million times. So. Right. And then you'll be like, never have, you know. Hmm. 
Okay. Anyway. All right. So we are nearing the end of our time here at Moon Live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you out there. Yeah. Um, Lane, thank you so much for letting me kind of sit in this seat and take charge. Thank you so much for being here. This is awesome. Yeah, super fun. This was a truly freaky Thursday. So freaky, so Back scary, so from spooky. The very first episode of Moon Live ever. Ever. First Moon Live. And ever. we honestly didn't even know that when we were creating that live stream that it would become absolutely what it is today no idea there was no concept of what where we're at but we just you know we we were just we both, vibed we were we were we thinking about this live stream concept that was newly emerging or you know we're like a little bit behind the times probably but like right, for but us I, it was I, newly emerging. it was new and i think also <laughs> we both have um attention to detail and sound yeah. quality and we wanted yeah. it to be like yep. pristine yeah. Um, I wanted to say thank you to the Moon Crew. Everybody here, you guys are amazing. Thank you for having me. And for all the work that you guys do behind the scenes, setting up the cameras, getting all of this stuff, all of this stuff, all of that. That's a lot of work. Thank you guys so much. Um, what are some things to look out for with Moon on the horizon? Like what can we what's what's what can we anticipate like what's going on anything you want to shout out plug you know yeah wow i've never been put on the spot with the plug question that's, that's great um, how does it feel <laughs> it feels like i should have thought about it yeah, but no right? we're working on all kinds of music we we have um some uh new music coming out from a lot of friends and artists that we work with like our friend colby our friend ahmad our friend hannah who's right there um <laughs> um working on some uh some commercials some films like w we're gonna keep shouting out all the music that we're making we we just did uh something i can't talk about really i can't say but it's a uh a sneaker brand commercial it's like uh you know uh Nike. He might have been a player on the Bulls for a while, and now Bulls? has his own brand on the Bull, on Bulls? Nike. The Bulls. 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 The balls. Balls. Balls is you know, the. Yo, the shout Cleveland out to the Mavs. Balls. Shout out to the Mavs. I was like half asleep watching. The oh, Mavs I didn't even fucking last ask. night in my bed, like checking out. Did they the win? Mavs. Yes, they won. That's Diego's team. Of course it is. Diego <laughs> kind of reminds me of Dirk. Is he still on the team? No, Dirk? no. Oh, oh, okay. But the I Mavs are doing great. I need Love to the Mavs. catch up on my basketball. But Shout he's out a to the he's, Mavs. he's a Mavs dude. Yeah, I, I um, yeah, we're rooting for them because he's like the only basketball. Yeah, we love fan the Mavs. Here, they, so. they, 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 it was a narrow. I didn't know you win. were a Mavs fan. Well, duh, Dallas. Or is he a Spurs fan? Wait, Josh, do you remember? San Antonio. I think Mavs. It's got to be the Mavs. So the. Mavs. Maps, maps, yeah, yeah. Map, the maps map. won. Okay, like right. it was like against the Clippers. I think they are now leading yeah, right. three to they're two. Yeah, right. They're playing Clippers. Cool. They won one hundred four to one hundred. Nice. It was a close. Knicks game. are out. Yeah, Knicks. I'm over it. Ooh, ouch. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm a maps fan. What can I? Yeah, say? that's cool. That's cool. Um, Dallas. Who? I mean, who's the next? Who's the mm -hmm. next week's guest? That's a surprise. It's a surprise. But okay, we have so them all lined up, and uh, we're going to post a full schedule this upcoming week Shit. for okay. literally like the next month and a half. It's awesome. We've been like really wow. killing the booking game Ooh. here, so it's going to be really exciting. Like, like from next week all the way out to the all end the of July. It, Fantastic. It's awesome. Yeah. And I wanted to introduce something that I hope mm. makes its way in the future to all these fantastic bookings that we have. Yeah. Um, it is called the moon landing. And tell me all about it. <laughs> <laughs> so what would your moon landing be if you were to land on the moon mm. and let's run the track? Oh, you know, the moon landing. It's our theme song. Oh, you want me to say? 
I think they're I... listening. Come here. <laughs> oh, anyway, well, okay. that was like a pregnant I pause. I love the theme song, though. Anyway, Shout out so to our, the moon our amazing landing, interns. Our moon landing. Yeah. I'm thinking, you know, Neil Armstrong when he landed on yeah. the moon. Yeah. One Iconic. small step for man. One, you know, you know the one. The giant leap, yeah. Mm hmm. I hope that we ask every guest coming on moon, <laughs> what would your moon landing be? And you are the first one. What would you say? What would your moon landing you land be? On the moon? What would your iconic? Mm. Oh, this is, oh, this is wow. Lane Banning dispatching from the moon. <laughs> <laughs> you got to think like. One small step for man. Right. One giant mm. leap for mankind. Think that. What would your moon landing be? Wow. It's a big question. You know, Buzz must have had like weeks to think about this, you know. He he pro he definitely wrote that down and rehearsed it. You even. think? I think so, yeah. Who's going to think of that? It's so poetic. One uh, small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Maybe it was off the cuff. I mean, he was in outer space. <laughs> I mean, I haven't been to outer space. Okay. Nah, I think he thought about it. But, okay. I'd probably say, okay. Um, Houston. Um, holy shit. I think that's my, that's my moon landing. <laughs> I'm going. That's what I'm going nice. with. Nice. Yeah. Nice. If I had a couple more weeks to think about, you know, I might tweak it. I might workshop might, it might a little bit, it. but that's like my, if I was to, to take a step off of this right now and land, land on, the moon, on the moon, I think Houston. that's, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's Cause like honest as, as we know about you, Lane Manning, you are very honest. <laughs> I try. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So Thank I love you that. So I love that segment. It's a great idea. Thank you so much for tuning in to Moon Live June 3rd with, the incredible Lane Banning. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing your time with us. And we will see you next week, folks. Have a great night.